good location on the on the banks of the Ohio, right, John? And you decided a new plant made more sense in expanding uh, old facility? Well, it's a different product line for us. It's an additional plant in our product line of plate. So, uh, yes, and it's a great location. It's a great town. Louisville. Great people. Yeah. Yeah, very close to Louisville. And, uh, you know, when you look at where the plate market is today, the largest plate market in the United States is right in the Midwest. So we're in the heart of the largest plate mill market. And we have scrap availability there, which is our largest cost raw material. So it's a great location. We're excited about it. It's going to be a very large plant. And it will take us from being a uh, supplier to the plate market to, be, to being a market leader in the plate market. We're excited about that. You worked for Dan. You worked with Dan, didn't you? Yes, I did. I worked with Dan and for Dan, yes. Are you, uh, are you similar in some of your viewpoints on, uh, <laughs> on, on D.C. and tariffs and, and, uh, and President Trump? Uh, in most ways, yes. Because I still hear from him uh, all the time. And he was a big uh, supporter of moves to try to level the playing field for, for the, the steel industry here in the face of a lot of, uh, of opposition to that. Do, are you a supporter of what oh, ab ab trying Absolutely. To do? You know, all we ask is a level playing field. I am so confident in our team, our Nucor, the Nucor team. If we get a level playing field upon which to compete, we will outcompete. Our team will outcompete any company or any country anywhere in the world. So all we need is that level playing field. And I'm speaking particularly about Nucor because of our cost structure and our product diversity and our market leadership positions. But in general, producing steel, if you have a global free market and a fair market on a global basis, the logical place to make steel is the United States. When you think about all the advantages we have to make steel here in the United States. I mean, clearly, we, we're, the biggest market is right here, so we can serve the market we're in. We have the raw materials to make steel right here. We have abundant and relatively inexpensive energy. When you put raw materials and energy together, that, comp uh, that composes about 70% of our cost structure. So you have it all here. And then, of course, shipping the product we're right in the heart of the market, the largest market in the world. So all of those advantages make making steel in the United States the logical place in the world to But the tariffs steel. have helped steel companies in two ways. Number one, it has forced or, or incentivized uh, companies to get their steel from U.S. companies versus foreign companies, but it's also allowed you to raise prices because you know that many more companies are going to be looking for steel here in the U.S. How much have you raised prices on consumers and will you continue to? Well, when you look at it, and it, prices have gone up, but what drives prices, you know, it's, it's market, it's economics 101, it's supply and it's demand. Pricing went up last year went up from about $750. I'll use hot band because that's the most commonly followed pricing. So in the beginning of, of 2018, our steel pricing on hot band was about industry-wide. It was about $750. Okay? Tariffs came in. Everyone blames the tariffs. So the price going up to about $1,000 in the middle of the year. So is it not fair to blame the tariffs for that price going up? I think it was much more driven by the economy. We had a strong economy. Energy was strong last year. Demand was up. And to put to, you know, to kind of verify that point, if you look at where we are today, today tariffs are still in effect, right? But the price of hot band is back down below where it was back in January of 2018. It's about 7.30 today. So it went from about 7.50, it went up to about $1,000 in the middle of the year, and now it's back down to about 7.30. What was driving it was the strong economy, strong energy, okay? Those were the things that were driving the economy. For example, another point I would make is that manufacturing was very strong because of the tax, uh, new tax program, because of deregulation. Manufacturing as a whole, the industry did very, very well last year. So steel companies did well, but so did our customers do well last year. And what happens if the tariffs go away? Because there are a lot of different versions of a potential uh, bill on Capitol Hill to reform the process that gave us these tariffs in the first place. Senator Grassley said he would work to actually implement some sort of compromise on that front. And some of them are retroactive and they would revisit the steel and aluminum tariffs. Mm -hmm. Are you lobbying against that? Well, we think they should stay in place. There's no doubt about that. But you asked the question, what happens if they go away? And I think it's an important question to answer. You know, it, it, if the economy stays strong, if energy stays strong, the things that are driving the resurgence in the steel industry. Tariffs are a tailwind. They're one of many factors. But deregulation, tax reform, which gives us a competitive corporate tax rate with the rest of the world, which we haven't had for years, 
So deregulation, the, uh, the tax reform bill, uh, a strong economy if the economy stays strong, manufacturing remains strong. And remember that in addition to 232 in terms of trade, we have successfully prosecuted so many trade cases over the last five years. And a successful trade case, take for example China, who successfully prosecuted 12 trade cases over the last five years. And the duties, the countervailing duties or the dumping duties assigned to those cases are well over 200 percent. So yes, and, and, and trade cases last five years with the possibility of doing a sunset review and making them last so 10 So are we years. open ourselves to criticism that we're practicing unfair trade? That, that's, that's what we hear all the time. But in my view, if, if you're responding to, you know, someone starts it. it, it, and it but you, you can see how we want to be all free market. We don't want to be protectionist. But to work, in the real world, we know that, that, that other countries, for some reason, don't, don't seem to be held to the same standards as we are. So why do we need to play by the free market standards when, we're, no. when we saw what happened to the steel? I, I don't think we should. I think that we should have a level playing field. You know, you mentioned what other countries, they don't have to play to the same standards. We talked about some of the economic standards. How about some of the environmental standards? Right. Okay. What about and human rights standards? I mean, human if, rights if, standards. if we that would be another. our... Uh, you know, it's just, it's impossible. So when they said that, that China, we weren't getting steel from China, we were getting it other places. China goes through other countries to, to, to get it here, right? That's, it, that's all it is. It's circumvention. If it's not coming from China, okay, they move it over to Vietnam. And that's one of the reasons why we needed a comprehensive trade remedy as opposed to just Grasso's the trade with cases. you on this, Grasso. You yeah. With, uh, no, no, I'm with you. And I, it really feels like there's a resurgence oh, there for is. the steel industry. Yeah. This is the best you felt probably in 10 years. So where, where is Nucor on that ladder? What advantages do you have over your competition? The whole group can work. Why does Nucor work better? Well, we've got a lot of advantages. Number one, you know, we are the low cost producer or one of the lowest cost producers in just about every product that we, that we produce. We have market leadership in eight of the 12 markets in which we participate in. And by the way, the plate market that we announced, the plate project we announced yesterday will take us to a market leadership position in that. So we'll be market leaders in nine of out of our 12. We have the most diverse steel product and steel products uh, portfolio anywhere in North America. So we have a lot of those advantages. We have a great geographical diversity. And John, we're but, our, our, but our greatest advantage, okay, our greatest advantage is our 26,000 teammates, men and women who work safe and work smart every day for Nucor. We're just about out of time, but I, I want to mention this new mill. Construction will begin later this year, but it won't open until uh, about 2022. Is there anything that could happen in the economy or in the trade war that would lead you to scrap these plans? No. We'll leave it there. Thank you, John. All right.